Hello, this will be a quick overview of Volvana, installation, submission, managing jobs. So I downloaded and extracted the installer. I have my file server share. This will be my server. I'm starting server on a machine. Okay, it's running uh, on my workstation. I will start the client. We'll do some processor speed test. Light is running. Next, I'm starting control. Okay, update done. It's connected. Workstation installer. I'm installing submission plugins. Okay, let's submit the scene. I'm submitting all three layers. Submit. Oh, there's my submission. And it's starting to render. Okay, it's working. The test setup works, so I will install the server as a service now. Start the workstation installer. I will install the server as service. Where is the user? S server is running in the background now. There's a small server watch tray icon and it will show me the log file of the server and if the server is running. It's take 30 seconds and the server should be running again. Yep, server is running. And control is working as well. I will do the same for the client. I will install the client as service. Okay, the client is running as service as well. There's still a tray icon which is client watch. Client watch connects to the service and displays all information. Time to add more clients. Of course, it's possible to start the workstation installer with command line options, so you don't need to start the user interface on each machine. Okay, 
the clients are doing the CPU test now and they will soon be available within one render. So we have already finished it. Now that I have more clients, I will create some client groups. So for example, farm and this machines and the new group workstation. Okay, save. Let's start a new submission. Uh, at first I can choose which layer I want to render and I can change settings of the job. I can verify that the scene settings are right. I can change the sequence, for example. I can change the client that should render, for example, this machine is my machine. Or I can assign only this farm group or only the workstation group. In this case, you probably see that the other farm machines are missing. This is because the client has detected that Maya is not installed on the other machines. It's only installed on farm 01. And that's why I cannot assign the other machines. I can change settings like priority, sequence divide is how many frames should be sent to a client. Render preview first, or render will render a few frames first of each job. So if you submit a lot of jobs, you will get a few frames of each job first. And you can see that the scenes are white and let it render overnight. There are some more things, for example, after which time it should start or wait for a different job. If the job requires approval after these few preview frames or if it job requires approval after all frames, I can tile the frame. If I'm having a very long render time, I can split the frame into parts and each part is rendered on a separate client. Or add a notification after the job is finished, please send a message to this machine. It's possible to create some command lines, pre and post render scripts or on submission scripts. In this case, I've uh, the default setting is the sequence checker and a small video. The sequence checker will verify that each frame is readable and not corrupt. And if it's corrupt, it will be deleted and automatically re-rendered. If I'm resubmitting an old scene again, then Wallrender will ask me if I want to delete the existing frames, overwrite them, or only render missing frames. So that was the short introduction of the submission. The client interface. It shows me the job or the jobs that are currently running on this machine. I can disable the client that it will not get any new job. I can abort the current job and disable the client. There's some inf hardware information. So for example, the temperature, the memory, CPU usage, network traffic, GPU usage. And as you can see, the CPU and memory usage have different colors. The white color is the CPU usage of the rendering and the dark color of the current system. There's an option to reserve cores, which means that if someone is locked in on this machine, the rendering will use less cores. It enables the option. Well, when I will apply it to the renderer, I've set the reserve cores to six cores, and as you can see, the CPU usage of the first six cores is dropping now. The reserve core settings is just to give the system some free CPUs to start your application, to initialize your application, because the rendering itself is running with low priority. 
low priority means that if I'm using all cores as an artist, then you will see that Maya takes all cores it needs and my rendering doesn't get any core at all. If you render a lot of images, then wall render will detect it and disables the client because it makes no sense to render on a machine that is used for some work all the time. If I have aborted and disabled the client, then you can see wall render will track how many minutes the user has been idle and the CPU has been idle. And if uh, there's no user interaction and no CPU usage within one hour, the client enables itself automatically. If I don't want that the client and we enables itself, I have to set up working hours. And as long as someone is locked in during the working hours, the client is disabled all the time and will not enable itself. I prefer not to use working hours in the farms that I administrate because people are not logging off in the evening and on the next day they might come in late or they don't come in at all and the client is disabled all the time. I just educate them that they should abort and disable once they get in in the morning and can work and in the evening the client enables itself. This way it does not matter when the artists are coming in or when the artists are leaving early or working late. As long as the artist is working, the client is disabled. If the artist is not on the machine and has not disabled the client, the client will render. Last one, RR control. I can start control via right click on the tray icon or search for it in the Windows menu. Okay, I will submit some jobs now so we can take a better look into our control. The new jobs have been submitted to look as they have been submitted by someone else, uh, which is why I don't see them. I have to change the user checkbox to all and there they are. Right now I'm submitting a packet of 50 jobs and I'm doing that I think 200 times. So we get a lot of jobs into our control at the moment. There are already 1400 jobs. I can search for user, I can enter a few letters of a user, same for application. This tab has some information about the job. I can take a look at the preview frames, which I mentioned earlier. These are the frames that are rendered first by default. I can scribble or write on the frames to tell other artists about some issue with the frame. There's a frame bar which shows me which frames have been rendered. If you use the view button, it opens the RR viewer. The advantage of the R viewer is that each client has saved a small version of your image and this small version is way faster to load. So even if you're rendering a 4K sequence, loading the sequence in this size takes perhaps 10 seconds. You can delete frames. If you delete frames within R viewer, the R viewer will ask you if you want to send the check for frames command to the server. A different advantage of the R viewer is that it will display results of the image comparison, which I have been done by the PostScript sequence check. For example, I'm opening some files of this sequence now, and I will emulate, for example, some color space issue or some camera difference. Well, the sequence check is executed after all frames are rendered. After the sequence check was done, you will see 
a small icon in our control as well. This one is green, there was no issue found. And in this case, there's a yellow warning sign and it means uh, Roland has found some frames with slight difference. So it has found our color difference and it has found this change in the camera aspect. So I can now delete these two frames. Okay, send it to re-render and all render checks two frames are missing and re-renders these two frames. Uh, you, you can send a message to the machine that has submitted the job. Settings, you can change all settings of the job, change the priority, enable, disable options, job log, if there is an error, it shows you in the frame log the frame time, performance, how much CPU was used, the best, the worst, frame table, again, information about each frame, client stats, how many times was a job sent, aborted, crashed on a client, and the render log files. In case there's an issue, you can take a look at the error messages of Maya. The render log file is available even if the machine is rendering. Job stats, you can compare different jobs. Global information, who is rendering on the farm. Statistics about the last 24 hours or 20 days on your farm or 360 days. In this case, they're empty because I've just installed all render. We have now almost 10,000 jobs in the job queue. And if I reopen our control, you can see that loading the information of 10,000 jobs is really fast. This was a short introduction of wall render. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in our Knights Tavern.